Hello everyone from Cork, the second largest city in Ireland. Some people from here would say that this is the real capital of Ireland. I'm not going to wade into that debate. I'll let you guys decide for yourselves. If there's any Irish people watching this and you want to comment on this below, you're certainly welcome to do so. But nevertheless, second largest city in Ireland, about a quarter of a million people that live here. And it's in the southwestern side of Ireland. So on the other side from Dublin, where I took the train from yesterday, what I'm going to do first is go and see something that is not just famous here in Cork, but it's one of Ireland's most famous spots. It's just outside of Cork. So I'm going to go and check that out first. So. Let's go. Where we're going to requires taking the 215 bus, which comes every half hour apparently, and we just missed it. You have to wait 25 minutes for the next one. So in the meantime, let's take a little walk down St. Patrick Street, which looks like it's the most central street here in Cork. Let's just kind of walk around here for the next 25 minutes till the 215 bus arrives and see what St. Patrick Street is like on a sunny, day like today. So St. Patrick Street seems to be just kind of this main thoroughfare that curls through the city center here in Cork. A lot of stores, shops, fast food restaurants, and a lot of little side streets that kind of pull off of St. Patrick Street that you can go and see some more things, more stores, more restaurants. I think more of the restaurants are more just off of St. Patrick Street. But nevertheless, it's a nice walk. Let's walk back to the bus stop we were at before. Should be a little bit closer to the time that the bus will arrive to take us to where we're gonna go to just outside of Cork. Oh, sorry. Great, thank you. Always nice to get the front seat upstairs on these double-decker buses. One thing to note, I, I only found this out today, is that if you have these leap cards from another city, I got mine in Dublin, so apparently you can use them here too. As long as you have enough credit on it, you can use them in Cork, and I'm guessing in other cities in Ireland as well. Which is nice, because, I mean, obviously, in a lot of other countries, the way you pay for transit from one city to another is different and it's not transferable from one city to another so the TFI leap cards very convenient and you can top them up with your phone you don't even have to go to a machine or a store you can just top them up on your phone the only difference I noticed here so far getting on the bus here is that instead of just tapping it and then you know a number shows that your credit shows up and then you go on I guess you had to leave it on there further and the bus driver has to hit some buttons and then you know and then you're good to go but other than that it's the same thing as using this in Dublin Yes, we have come to Blarney Castle, where the famous Blarney Stone is. One of the most famous things in Ireland. You could even say maybe one of the most famous things in all of Europe, but definitely one of the most famous things in Ireland. No surprise that this is a major tourist destination. Luckily, this is a time of the year where there's not quite as many tourists. It's about a 30 minute bus ride from the center of Cork. So you can just get regular local bus 215 and if you have your TFI card, works just normal fare. Very easy to get up here that way. The bus runs every half hour. You can't not come here if you're visiting Cork. There's been a site here since the 10th century, but the castle that exists today apparently is the third structure that has been built on this site, and it was built in the 15th century. It has survived a lot of wars and bombardments that have happened since then. So I guess you could say one of the most remarkable things about it is that it's still standing. There is some evidence of that on the structure as it exists today. You'd have to expect that something this old would have some damage and some weathering, but yes, there's some evidence of the tumultuous history that this castle has lived through.
fighting, but I couldn't get there fight for some reason. Many of you have probably heard of the Blarney Stone and kissing the Blarney Stone and apparently kissing the Blarney Stone gives you the gift of eloquence and persuasion. Something I could make very good use for because of course it can make me more eloquent in my videos and more persuasive for more of you guys to watch my videos and to subscribe to my channel. Uh, it used to be a very dangerous thing to do. But now, of course, since so many tourists like to go and kiss the Blarney Stone and try to increase their fortunes with having more eloquence and persuasion power, um, there's iron bars now that make it quite a bit safer to do now than it used to be before. Apparently, nobody's really died trying to do this, as far as it's known. I think maybe one time recently there was like one person who fell down and, and died or got severely injured or something from this. Obviously now, because this is such a well-traveled tourist destination, it's not dangerous now. If you're willing to take the hundred or so steps up to the top to go and kiss it to see if your fortunes will get better, then yeah, it's a pretty easy thing to do. If you needed a toilet a few hundred years ago, this is where it would be. Quite a luxury back in those days. Definitely be very careful on these steps, especially if you have big feet like me because these steps are not designed for people with big feet. There is a rope that you can hang on to. I recommend doing so when you go up. And as long as you're careful, it's fine. You can go up. It's also very tight in here too. And it gets tighter and tighter the higher you get. You do get rewarded for your troubles when you reach the top though. Definitely worth it. Nice views up here. All right, so up here at the top, this is where the famous stone that apparently brings you some good fortune if you kiss is located. Not a very long line today because it's a weekday, it's sort of going into the off season. There would be a much longer line here if you were to come in the summer. We made it all the way up to the top here, so we might as well go kiss the thing and see if it's true what they say about it. All right. <laughs> I mean, you know, if you come here, you might as well do it. Okay, going down is a bit of a challenge too, but oh, once you awesome. once you get this first spiral, it actually evens out a little and it's not so bad. As long, as long as you hold on, you'll be all right. Am I persuasive enough for you guys yet? Apparently it's supposed to make me more persuasive if I kiss the stone, so let me know if it's working.
just walked by Blarney House. It is private, so you can only see it from the outside. Really interesting looking house. It looks like something you might see in Scotland, and it's because apparently it is built with a type of stone from Scotland. So anyway, just kind of walking back through the gardens here and towards the exit so we can take the bus to head back down to Cork and see what else Cork has to offer for us today. So apparently you can walk the labyrinth and meditate and consider a problem. No shortage of those to consider. So, all right, let's go ahead and do it. And here's what it looks like. So you just kind of start here. I mean, this is the whole thing here, so it's not a labyrinth to get lost in, but you can just kind of follow it here. <laughs> I thought it continued on, but I guess you get to the middle and that's it. Well, I just kind of cheated and walked out by hopping over the grass because I figured backtracking might be kind of pointless and some other people started walking the labyrinth too, so a um, little tough to kind of go around other people in that little thin walkway there. But I don't know. I guess maybe I feel a little more at peace with things, at least for the time being. Hopefully I didn't negate it by cheating on my way out, if it's considered cheating to you know, hop over the grass. But here's the big cathedral that it's right next to, right here. And I'm not sure if it's still open. If it is, because it is getting a little bit later in the day, but if it is, we can kind of walk in and take a look. So the Shandon Bells and Tower at St. Anne's Church is another famous spot in Cork. To go inside, it closes at 4.30, so if you're here later than that, apparently this little courtyard area outside of it is still open to walk around, and the bells could still be heard, as you can hear. Even if you don't make it to see the inside of it, it's still cool to see up close and to hear the bells ringing. After a day of touring around Blarney and then Cork itself, let's find a place to eat. Apparently. Cork is known as a food capital, so let's find something good to eat then. If you can't find something good to eat in a food capital, I don't know what you're gonna do. And we're back over the river here, just down the street from Thompson's Bar and Restaurant, where I had a really nice Clonakilty chicken dinner. And here is where we will end our day here in Cork, Ireland. A nice little city that's worth spending a day or two here in southwestern Ireland. I will be moving on to another part of Ireland, so I would like you guys to stay tuned so that you can see where I will be going after this. Make sure to hit like on this video, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and until then, take care and travel better.